understand? Take back it into your heart. If your Bible is in the heart, I'm in Basel 1. Okay, we'll count one, two, three, and do our procedure manual. I love you, and God bless you. One, two, three. This book of the law shall not depart from my mouth, but I shall meditate in it day and night, that I may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then my way prosperous, and then I will have good success. Amen! Hallelujah. may be seated. Give the Lord a wonderful hand of honor, glory, and praise once more. Thank you very much for the few people who gave the Lord a wonderful hand of praise and honor. Others said to God, no, we procrastinate. We will give it to you later. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for Muruti Musidi who is with, you, with us this morning. Uh, Muruti Musidi is from Impumalanga, is a close friend of the family and the ministry. And in essence, I look at her as part of us, as part of this ministry. She's been here several times. She comes and sit in our midst. And then you may not know the person you are talking to. Some of you have found the privilege and honor to speak to her. And she came uh, to spend some time with Mama in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, Bazalwan. Amen, Bazalwan. Actually, in church, we have had one lady who used to come here and then was coming from somewhere as a pastor's wife, and she fellowshiped with us for several years, and then we believe that she will continually come and visit us from time to time. She had decided to be a part of us, but a part of the ministry that they are governing with the husband, and we love them very much. May the Lord continue to bless them wherever they are. Amen, Bazalwan. And of course, we've got another pastor who is watching this mostly on a YouTube because she is working together with her mom who is not physically strong, physically strong because of age. And then because of that and the distance, she spends time there. And she's a part of us. She is a Muruti also, who is a part of our church. You may not know them that this one is a pastor unless somebody tells you. They come here to serve together with us and she's with us on a full-time base. Mudima Metzeng Hantle, Adetzeng Hantle, Amen Bazalwan. Now let us talk about the yoke. I mean, what's the word? Joko. Kona lupina rin joko ya hao. Ebu bebe. Enkatulu la pilo. Kona lidi joko chidi lirin hadilu hudima hao. Joko katulu la pilo. I don't know if there is anybody else here who know the meaning of katulu la. They refreshes, they energize your heart. They make you look forward to the future. They make you excited about life. Even in difficult times, there are yokes when they come upon you, when they are put on you, when they are placed on you, they get you motivated. They mobilize you. They make you want to take the world. This song is saying, Choko ya how? 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 Who? Your, your, your yoke. Whose yoke? The Lord's yoke. God's yoke. Jehovah's yoke. There are yoke. There is a yoke when it is placed upon you. It transforms your life. You learn a lot from that yoke. So today we want to talk about yoke in Jesus' name. May the Lord guide us, may the Lord lead us, may the Lord give us an ear to understand and ear to hear. May the Lord anoint my lips so that when I share this message with you, I will share it nice, easy, deliberate, and with eloquence. And there will be nothing that will stand on the way of your understanding and my, my presentations and my expressions in the name of Jesus. Satan stand no chance because yokes come from two sources. They come either from God or they come either from Satan. And they all use different instruments. And one of the instruments that is most often used is humanity. So when the devil works, he uses, uses a human. When God works, he uses a human. So both of them, they don't come here and express their will and get their will done. But they use a body. They use an instrument. They use a tool. And most Often the tool used, of course, is a man, is human being. Satan can even use a lion to, to devour you. Satan can either can also use a cat to hit you with the nails. Satan can use a dog to bite you. Amen, Bazalwan. 
Satan can make you ignore a path where there is a big rock and you, you stumble on that rock and you hurt yourself. Amen, Bazal one. So there are two sources that bring jokes. One is God, one is Satan. It depends on whose yoke is on your shoulders. Amen. Amen, Bazalwan. We are all burdened, but the difference is the kind of the is the kind of yoke we individually pick up for ourselves. There are yokes everywhere, but we have the hour, we have the power to select to choose the yoke we want. God says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29, 29, I believe, or to, uh, chapter 30, 16, somewhere there. But the Bible says, God puts be before you life and death, and you must make a choice. So here I'm saying to you, we are all burdened, but the difference is the kind of the yoke we individually pick up for ourselves, either the yoke of misery or the yoke of joy. So around this time, which people ascribe to COVID and I refuse because every time is the Lord's time. Every age is God's age. Every season belongs to God. Every season is the Lord's season. But people, because of the kind of yoke they have put on their shoulders, they, they, they ascribe seasons to in accordance to the yoke that is upon them. Why? Amen, Bazalwan. How Matata, when you look at life, when you look at everything, you see it with the spectacles of difficult times. And everything that happens to you is according to the yoke that is upon you. And that yoke that is upon you is your personal choice. Amen, Bazalwan. I say it's your personal choice. You may choose the yoke that will depress you up until the last time of your life, oppress you, suppress you up until the, life, the last time of your life, the last moment of your life, and you may choose the yoke that will keep you successful even in difficult times. Because it's very, very important for us to know that we have to submit our lives and our hearts and, and our totality to either God or Satan. You cannot be in the middle. You have to make a choice. And the choice you make will determine, will determine to you the yoke you pick up. The yoke you allow to be on your shoulders. If I've chosen God and Satan put a yoke on me, I will fight that yoke in the name of Jesus. I say I will fight that yoke in the name of Jesus. We, all, we, we, we are all burdened, but the difference is the kind of yoke we individually pick up for ourselves. Either the yoke of misery or the yoke of joy. Steve Biko says, or said, Steve Biko said, the black man has become a shell, a shadow of man. A shadow of man, completely defeated, drowning in his own misery. A slave, an ox bearing a yoke of oppression with sheepish timidity. Timidity. With sheepish timidity. This is Steve Biko, the late Steve Biko, a politician. Let me repeat what Steve Biko is saying so that those who want to write that, um, it's not Jesus, it's Steve Biko. Amen, Bazaran. It's not me. Steve Nibiko, Amen Bazaran. He says, the black man has become a shell, a share of men. Even your contribution, nobody regards them. A share of men, completely defeated, drowning in his own misery, a slave, and also bearing the yoke of oppression with sheepish timidity. Sheepish timidity. I don't know some of you if you had, had an opportunity of seeing when a sheep is slaughtered. Even if it is afraid, even if it is shaking and trembling in fear, it does it in such a way that you may not even be able to see. Even if it is slaughtered, it's not going to scream, cry loud like a goat. It will go in silent. That is the problem of a black man. Whites are known by making audible their complaints. 
they highlight their complaints and they shout their complaints on top on top of mountains. Blacks go speed, sheepish, quiet, even when they are abused, even when they're going through a difficult time, even when the government is not saving them excellently, even though the devil, I mean the government is not paying attention to their needs. Blacks will be quiet. Steve Biko have seen that and he discovered that, that he's leading a mob of people who will be quiet even in difficult times, who will never stand up and express them, themselves. Who even when they express themselves, they express themselves using tools that are useless. Protest to me is a useless endeavor. It's an endeavor that sometimes causes us to break and destroy community facilities. But there is a better way of expressing your anger. You must go to the poll. You must go and vote and, and put up your eggs. Especially when you live in a de democratic country. America changes leadership as they choose. You can become a Republican leader. But next time you may not be a leader. The Republican may not be leading the country. It may be the Democrats. But when it gets to blacks, even if things can be how difficult, you bow down because you grew under monarchy. And when you grow under monarchy, like the, the problems they are having in Swaziland, because the monarchy speaks, whether it is in your favor or not, or not in your favor, you must just succumb. And we, are, we have learned, we have been taught to be humbled, even in situations we are not supposed to. But when it gets to white people, they stand up and express themselves. And by the radio, I'm in Basalwa. So Steve Biko discovered that. There is Steve Biko. Steve Biko. He says the black man has become a shell, a shell of men. Even if you can be how brilliant, you are still looked at as a stupid, as a fool, as someone who has no understanding. You are an illiterate in your education with your degrees because they will never be easily recognized. A shadow of a man completely defeated, drowning in his own misery, in his own country, in the land, in, in, his, in what they call the motherland. This is God's land. But of course, we call it our motherland. I'm in Bazaar. And a slave. And us bearing the yoke of oppression with sheepish timidity. Willingly, willingly, no one chooses a yoke of slavery. You are drawn either through man's flattery or Satan's deceit. In most cases, you can come to a beautiful, wonderful church, powerful church. Of course, we will always be biased when it comes to that. Powerful church is this one. Can somebody say Amen. I'm not going to say a powerful church as the other church next door. Uh, then, then I don't need to be here. I'm in Bazalwan. Even if you can be in such a powerful church, a church that educates you, a church that inspires you, a church that opens you, your, your understanding enlightens you. Some people will come with flattery words and take you out of that wonderful environment, a wonderful covering. How? Flattery. The people whose eye only look at the bad apples, bad aspect of a life. Show me a perfect man. Show me a man who never flat, uh, falters with his own tongue. Show me a man who has no wrong, even through the Bible. But men will come and, come and highlight flattery with flattery tongue and show you the wrong so that they flatter you out of a place of, 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 of life, power, and success for you. A place that has to rekindle your vision and your, your dreams. Saying dreams, I wish next week I can talk about dreams. Willingly, no one chooses the yoke of slavery. You are drawn either through men's flattery or Satan's deceit. Ah, he's a specialist when it comes to deceit. Satan. <laughs> Bible is a creator of lies. He authored lies. Yeah, you must go and check John chapter 8. He authored lies. Satan is the author of lies. When he speaks lies, the Bible says it is his native language. Satan never says anything good. If Satan comes to you and says, hey, you look more beautiful than the rest, you must know he is lying. 
Even if Satan can give you riches, you must know that there is a trap in those riches. He's a deceiver. He says if you dethrone somebody else, you'll be enthroned tomorrow. You dethrone someone else and those who help you to dethrone and assassinate someone as they kill you to take that throne. So Satan will always deceive. He's a deceiver of the brethren. The dragon. Amen, Bazalwan. You can hear by the description of his character that Satan is Satan. That is why I don't call him Satan. As if he's a, he has a sexy name. But they listen to a sexy name. It's Jehovah. Amen, Bazalwan. Amen. So that's how we are deceived. Because Satan. When the difficult broken, the heavy burden is removed. I'm telling you, when we live this life, the day those, 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 those yokes are broken, that's the time you're going to be uh, uh, freed from, bed, from heavy burdens. When the difficult yoke is broken, when the difficult yoke is broken, when the difficult yoke is broken, the heavy burden is removed. All of a sudden, you feel light. You feel light like you light in the music. You feel light like you light in the music. Amen, Bazalwan. Amen. Oh, Celine, oh, you, you, you feel light. Oh, Celine, amen, Bazalwan. The reason for a slow progress of the world seems to lie in a single fact. What is that fact? That makes the world not to progress. That makes the world to take its four steps backward. We are heading for primitive, for, 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 for the time of uh, the, the primitive stages. You know, the primitive stages is when other people want to rule over you, boss you around, and destroy your, cho your choices. And the setup system, this is what we call syst systematic se uh, seclusion. Systematic seclusion. Separation of development. It's very simple to pursue, even the policies that were pursued by the apartheid regime. Very simple. You introduce places where only the rich will be able to stay there. And of course, those who dominated the capital will be the ones who will stay there. And the rest, which is the men of the poor people, will stay somewhere. You separated them without saying to them, I separate you. So the reason for the slow progress of the world seems to lie in a single fact. Every man is born under the yoke. Why? Because when we are born, there is a yoke that is given to us. God has given us yokes. That is why those yokes, they give us life, they give us joy, they give us vision. Every man is born under the yoke and grows up beneath the oppression of his age. And grows up beneath the oppression of his age. You have a yoke. You have a mission to fulfill. You have a burden to, to, to pursue. But you grow in an age. Kanako. Kanako ni ngori. Babu san. Babu laya. Diltoro Yeah, you are born with a vision. You are born with a yoke. There is a yoke. A yoke that is going to bring joy. That is going to bring excitement to your family. But you can't because you cannot afford to maintain and to take care of your own. You cannot afford to take care of your parents. You cannot afford to help your brother. You cannot afford to even help your own child. When you were born with a vision, you know what you want to do for them. But the age at which you, you, you live, the age at which you were thrown in, have people who are, 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 are cruel in an unbelievable way. And they do it in a sly way. That is why from time to time, you'll keep, you'll keep on raising their flags. Matthew chapter 8, uh, 11, verse 28 to 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. I know that most of us will know this scripture. That's the reason we quote it. Matthew chapter 
28 from verse 20, uh, Matthew chapter 11 from verse 28 to 30 to 30 says, come to me, Jesus is calling, come to me, Jesus said, all you who labor and are heavy laden, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take it. It's your choice. He says, take it to me. Take it to me. Not take. Take it. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. You will never be a, 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 a customer to psychiatrists and psychologists. You will never be sitting next to the counselors. Because your soul will be intact. You have taken the yoke of Jesus. If you take Jesus' yoke, you will find rest for your soul. Verse 13. For my yoke is easy. Somebody say, Jesus said, his yoke is easy. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How good is God? How sweet is his yoke? I don't, I don't think I've ever seen one who is like God, who dies for sinners, who carries sinners' sick, sins and sicknesses upon him, who goes before God to be condemned on behalf of the wrong, and he accepted their wrong. His burden is sweet. His burden is sweet because he became your substitutionary sacrifice. He said, God, instead of punishing them, punish me on their behalf. He shed the blood we're supposed to shed. Sweet Jesus. You know that song that says, Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Amen, Bazalwan. He's fair. He's more fair. That's the only place you'll find justice. If you talk equity, that's what you'll find in him, in Jesus. Fair Jesus. Too fair. That he took your sins and sicknesses and all your troubles upon him. And he, 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 he became a doorway for better life than the one we find in this world. That is why we talk about eternity. We should not stop talking about the heaven. We should not tell, stop telling people that you get born again. Not to only have good life here on earth. So that even if you don't have good life here on earth, you will know that there is a better life that God has set aside for you. Amen, Bazalwan. The yoke you wear determines the burden you bear. The yoke you wear determines the burdens you wear. I'm telling you, the, 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 the yoke you choose will determine it, it, it is a foot of a moral or of a marketing when you choose a ruthless cruel criminal and you marry that criminal if you choose a draggy a draggist a draggy a, a drug addict and drug lord that's the type of life you're going to live you made a choice if you chose the wrong association you will get into trouble because you chose the yoke and it brought with itself the burdens so the burdens that you are carrying is because of the yoke you have chosen if you see other people succeeding, having good life, and their life brightening and shining brighter by day, you must know it's the yoke they have chosen, and it has brought a burden of success. You can blame me as Murutuakaho, you can blame Ramaphosa as your president, but bottom line is the yoke you chose. Yeah, you may say EFF will do better. You may say uh, one Africa or one uh, Africa or something will do better. You may say DA, you may say ANC, but I'm telling you, at the end of the day, the yoke you choose determines the burden that comes upon you. The burden you bear. Morolo Jerungo, Utiswekichoko, and we 
Lela motho mo pila ga go e khatile man. Ya o khatile. Only the man. Only the man who follows the command of single mindedly and resistingly and unresistingly sorry and unresistingly let his yoke rest upon him finds his bed in easy and under its gentle pressure receives the power to persevere in the right way let me read that sentence once more only the man who follows the command of jesus single-mindedly and unresistingly let his yoke rest upon him the yoke of jesus rest upon him because he has made a choice find his burden the burden of jesus the, the burden that jesus brings on that person easy and under its gentle pressure receives the power to persevere in the right way amen bazaar that's why I say to you, the, ro the, 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 the yoke you choose, the yoke that is upon you, determines the burden you will go through. Some people are going through easy burdens. Easy burdens. Amen, Bazalwan. Amen. Willingly, no one chooses the yoke of slavery, sickness, and poverty. When there is a yoke of freedom, health, and wealth, Willingly, a hona moto kheta ngai kemi se di taro bana na ki bata ho tope ha na ki bata ho ba mulwe tum hara ba mulwe ti na ki bata ho ba ncha hara di ncha ayo ayo yo moto kheta ntope ho a hona moto bata ho tsoga ho sena di jokon tlu a hona moto bata ho tsoga ho sena electricity kon tlu a hona moto bata ho tsoga a sena tshelta go tswa bana ka sekolo a hona moto bata ho tsoga sa tsebe o tsogela nga sena mo sebetse a tsena le vije Willingly. Willingly, no one chooses the yoke of slavery, sickness, and poverty when there is a yoke of freedom, health, and wealth. Health and wealth. The command of Jesus is a heart. Somebody said the command of Jesus is hard. The, the command of Jesus is hard. Unutterable. Unutterably hard. For those who, who try to resist it. I'm telling you, the yoke that comes from God is heavy for people who don't want Jesus. People don't want to be born again. But for those who willingly give themselves to the yoke of Jesus, life gets to be easy because the burden they bear is easy. But the ones who resist this yoke are the ones that find it hard and utterably hard. If you feel that it's very difficult to become a Christian, you must know you were compelled by your parents, you were compelled by your friends, you never made your own choices. Because if you made your own choices, living for Christ is the best way that could ever happen to you. But for those who were compelled, who were, who were convinced into it, and they came in hesitant, they never find joy in serving, in loving, in worshiping, in honoring God. But for those who willingly submit, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. Amen, Bazaloa. That's why Elia said to you, you don't have to, 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 be, to be compelled to serve in church. It is your choice. You look around and you check for opportunities to serve and you volunteer. You look around and you see that there is a gap somewhere. There is something that needs to be done and nobody's doing it. And you assume that role and become the leader in that role. You make the choice. We are in an era where you must have a relationship with God and you must make choices and talk with your God and find out what is it that God wants you to be a part of. And if you don't want to be a part of, but you want to live for, you want to live for God, you want to relate with Him, you still come here, sit down, listen to the word, worship together with us, love your God. It must be your personal choice. Amen, Bazalwan. 
Don't ask me, Murudu, what must I do? No, why should you ask me? Am I your God? Am I the one you received? Or did you receive Jesus as your Lord and your final, your final Messiah? Amen, Bazalwan. Amen. But those who, but for those who willingly submit, who willingly give themselves to, who willingly submit, the yoke is easy. And the burden is light. Let me tell you what makes you to find it difficult to give to the project. Let me tell you what makes it difficult for you to, give, to tithe. It's because you have not willingly given yourself. And it becomes burdensome. It becomes a heavy yoke. But for those who willingly, they stand up and they serve God. Whether it's favorably or not. Amen, Bazalwa. You must make choices to follow Christ. If you don't make choices to follow Christ, you will forever be in crisis. C-R-I-S-I. S-I-S. It -S. <laughs> doesn't say crisis. You receive Christ, you end up in crisis. God's purpose was not simply to deliver Israel from Pharaoh's yoke. It was to bring them under his yoke. Some people think God can deliver you in the kingdom of darkness so that you come in and still be under the rulership of Satan. But he delivers you from kingdom of darkness so that you can come in and be under his burden. Why? His burden is nice and easy, very light. Yehovah complexion. Bona Lebanjayang. Amen, Bazalwa. Because of the yoke. I'm telling you, even when the world can be a home miserable, when you have Jesus as your yoke, when you carry the yoke of Jesus, even in difficult times, you will be excited. Why? You know where you are going, you have a purpose, you have a dream, and the yoke that is upon you is easy. It's very light. 63 years. Why did he appear here? Why? Because the yoke is easy. Come on. We all want to remain young. We get irritated as we get old. We get irritated with the pains on our bodies with no reason. You become tired even when you never labored. You never did any hard work. No diligence in you, but you are tired and your body is aching. Who wants that? That's all rubbish. But youthful life, youthful life. Amen, Pastor Lord. Youthful life. Youthful life. Are, he, he does not want to grow. And let me ask you, who wants to become old, decay, and rot? Over the whole ball. Nobody. In the garden, I don't want to become a thorn. I want to become a rose. I say in the garden, I don't want to become a thorn. I want to become a rose. I don't want to be a thorn on your side, on your flesh. I want to be a rose in your heart. When you think about me, smile and say, I want to miss a day. I want to miss a day. I want to think about you and miss you. I don't want to think about you and feel the, the, the pain in my body. Pain comes with aging. We must remain young in the Lord. Young in the Lord. Young in the Lord. Amen. May I dance the same when I'm 73? It is not in the hand. Hey, listen to this. It is not in the it is not in the understanding. It is not in understanding a set of doctrines. You know some people because they believe they understand the Bible and they have the doctrines. But I do to believe. It is not in understanding a set of doctrines. It is not in outward comprehension of the scheme of salvation. Outward comprehension 
of the scheme of salvation. Ho nala batho ba tse ba ntsela tsa pholoso ba e di utlwisisa sentle o tla go blela go raolo mo zalwana o tshontso phele so tswa monna we. Tswa ya monna. It is not that. It is not that. That is why we are wrongly judged. Because people are using wrong judging methods. They are using wrong judging tools. Had they not been seen on earth, we wouldn't be having seen us. Had you had the, if you had the ability to deal with sin, Jesus would not have carried your sins. It wouldn't have been by grace that you're going to enter and that you have entered eternal life. It is by grace and the only price you paid is the gift of is the gift of faith which you receive from him. And it is only by grace. But those who think they understand the scheme of salvation, they think that the masters to tell you how you to how to live because they know the doctrines and they think they understand the doctrines. It is not the understanding of the doctrines and the and the scheme of salvation. That is going to give you the peace, the rest that you only find in believing, in having faith in Jesus. I'm telling you, the rest you have is the rest that comes as a result of the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, and 10. Remi sebet ya matongo akach. And it is not how much you think salvation and saved people should behave and conduct themselves. To hell with that doctrine. Allow God, allow God to live life with you. Live life with God. Amen, Basalwan. I have lived life with Mama for 31 years. There's a lot wrong that I have done, but she's still staying with me. Why? Why? Because love covers a multitude of sins. Love accommodates you, allow you to grow. Love gives you the opportunity to excel. Love gives you the opportunity to become a better person. But those who are there to the doctrines, those who believe they have the schemes of salvation, they will knock you down. Kill you and destroy you even before you're dead. You will die before you are buried because of those and they will still live in your joy, your rest. Amen. It is not in understanding a set of doctrines. It is not in outward comprehension of the scheme of salvation that the rest and peace are to be found. But it is in taking up in all lowliness and meekness the yoke of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. can go and throw themselves in the pool of confusing seas. 
We're not going to live our lives to impress you. We've got God to impress. We've got God who must approve our lifestyles. Don't put your yoke upon our shoulders, the yokes you can carry. You hypocrite. I will never go to the church. We're not going to live our life to impress men. We've got God to impress. We've got Jesus to impress. He's the only one who died for us. He's the only one who has a yoke that will, that will lighten the burden and deal away with the heavy burdens. But you are not a virgin. Who said you must be a virgin to come to Christ? Leave us alone. Leave us alone. We love our Jesus. Don't put heavy burdens on our shoulders. Don't judge us carnally. You carnal driven person. Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Not from all these stupid people. And learn from me. For I am gentle, not rough, not cruel, not hard. But I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's give the Lord a wonderful honor man by just clapping hands and praising him. We wouldn't have found, we wouldn't have found a better God, a better Lord than Him. Amen, Bazalwai. Yeah, there's a scripture that I want to read, but my time has expired. We'll continue next week. I thought this was supposed to be only one session, but it's supposed to be now two sessions. Because if I read this scripture, it's going to go, 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 go. So I'll take another hour. Somewhere on the platform. And you know you need Jesus. You have been burdened. I say burdened by gossipers. You have been burdened by people who portray Christ as a monster. You have been told that the gospel is not fashioned for people of your caliber. I want you to know from today that God knows you. He knew you even before you were in, your, in the womb. And when you were introduced to life, he was there. He's the one who introduced you to life. He had a top description for you. He had a better life for you. And he wanted to travel this journey with you. But these people who have brought all kinds of doctrines your way stood up between you and God. And today, you can come to the gracious God. The Bible says in the book of Titus chapter 2, Jesus, I mean, it says grace will teach you godliness. The grace of God, not people. The grace of God. Don't say that you are not a Christian. 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 You Apostle, or such a gentleman, a prophet, a babuata, or Chantua Gibonte Bamudi, Bonte Bamudi, Mudimaru Takatakanitana, Uaka Wana, Kotimulu Ho, Kenakenta Motokasa Tuanosaka, or Rata Ole Hela Jalu, just as you are. 
And that is what is going to transform your life. His grace, his loving kindness, his mercy, his patience, his long, his long bearing, his tolerant. Amen, Bazalwan. And you might be on the platform. You might be here. And you may be knowing that there is God that you need. And today we want to present him. It is Jesus who died for you, who shed his blood for you. Amen, Bazalwan. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should do what? Have eternal life. If you believe, whoever, anybody else, if you believe in him, you have eternal life. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Ere when you, 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 you believe in, 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 with your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Not all this rubbish. You will be saved. Not all these doctrines. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Eri, eri. Ha udumela kore morena jeso tu isuwe ki muti. Obo buwa kamulo mwaka kore buniti jeso ki more. Eri otla eta ing, otla puloso. When you go to verse 13 of the same book and the same chapter, chapter it says, when you call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus, when you call upon the name of Jesus, you will be saved. Bible in chapter 2 verse 8, it is by grace that you are saved through faith which is the gift of God. That is why we cannot stand before people and boast. But what is it? The gift. Wanahahu is not yet born, but already he is given gift and he has never labored to earn a salary. He is given gifts. Why? Because those gifts doesn't need anything from your child. They are free. That's what salvation is all about. It's a free gift from God. The Bible says all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Romans chapter 3, 23, and fell short of the glory of God. When it goes down, here we get the salvation. We get the redemption because of the shed blood of Jesus. We labor to get out of sin and become righteous. The Bible says, whatever Abraham God did not get it because he was a good man. It says, because he believed God, it was accredited to him for righteousness. Just for what men are doing, Abraham will be one more than a siami. And by the way, Ron, read the prayer to Abraham. Amen. Kasheko, o katamu pilas fadu samu dim. Waru muti mikin now. I'm laying my life before you. From now on, I want to carry your yoke. May we stand on our feet and pray. If there is anybody in our midst who says, "Muruti, I'm one of those who really need Jesus." So when we make this prayer, personalize it. Make it your own prayer. Accept it. Say, this is my prayer, Lord. <clears throat> and believe that after we've made this prayer, after me, O steady man, O sintombi, mema toto, after Bobo Otebalemu, Mampostolo, they say, after Bobo Otle, Rilemo, Ekot, after Bobo Otle, Resuno Rape, We, Namo Haram Mistiaro, Otibang Wata Morena Jesu, Har Ame, Otibang Rulwena, Osolung Wana Wamuti. Awatu Anela Horo Yo Konu Keng, Olo Kena Konu Keng, Awatu Anela Horo Peiti Iwa, Hau Nililis Peiti, Horbaro Utli Inwa Sinyam, on the platform, do the same. Can we pray? Repeat these words after me. Dear Father, thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your mercy. 
Thank you for your grace. You are good. Thank you for who you are. Today, I repent from my old ways. I give in to you. Father, from today, I receive Jesus as the Lord of my life. I repent from my ways. Thank you, Lord, for the shed blood of Jesus Christ that has cleansed me from all unrighteousness. From now on, I am your righteousness. I am in Christ. And your Bible says, those who are in Christ are new creation. From today, I'm a new creation. Old things are passed away. My sins, my sicknesses, my poverty, they are all passed away. From now on, I have your righteousness, your holiness, your wealth, and your health in Jesus' name. Thank you for the blood that has cleansed me. Give me the hunger and the thirst and the deep desire to fellowship with God-fearing Christians and to read the Bible and to come to church to worship and honor you. In Jesus' name, I appreciate you. From now on, I am your child. Amen. Let's give the Lord a wonderful hand of praise, believing that all those who made this prayer from today, they are born again, that the children of God and all their burdens are taken away because God has brought the yoke of Jesus upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming to church. I really do love you and I know you love me. I want us to do our profession, uh, 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 our closing profession. And then after we have done our profession, the session will be over. This session was intended to be uh, one series, but we'll then have to do it again next week just to complete and look at one or two things. And from there, thank God that nobody else will ever put a burden on us. Nobody else will ever put a burden on us in Jesus' name. So I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as my hand is stretched towards all of us who are here and all those who are on the platform, on Facebook and on YouTube, Lord God, as my hands are, 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 are raised and lifted towards all of us, Father, we pray your favor upon us. Favor, Lord God, goes not with poverty, sickness, depression, and oppression. Favor goes with peace, joy, happiness, and tranquility. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray doors that has been shut for all of us to open up in our favor. In Jesus' name. May your favor remain and be upon all of us, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you that every single day is a day you have made for us. And in every single day, we will become fruitful, productive, and will enjoy our lives. And Father, I pray that we, you reveal to us through the Holy Spirit in whichever method or format, the dreams, the vision you have given to all of us so that we find purpose to be here on earth, on earth and to live accordingly in the precious mighty name of Jesus. We love you, Father, for we know you have done it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.